So, what exactly do you do as a role as a windsurfing coach? Well, it's a, I'd say it's a pretty holistic uh, uh, role, um, from depending who I'm, I'm coaching at any one time, but it can be anything from helping to create the environment and the, you know, guide the lifestyles a bit through to working with Nick, where you're more perhaps facilitating very small improvements uh, and very collaborative, and, and certainly at the top end sailors, I think you're very much working as a, as a partnership mm -hmm. more than a coach-led necessarily coach-led environment. And sometimes it's pretty mundane stuff, it can be just laying, laying training marks and facilitating the, the particular goal for the day and, and sometimes that is just blowing a whistle mm -hmm. and working a stopwatch. Um, other times it can be very technique based and uh, you know perhaps more traditional sports style coaching because of the physicality of windsurfing you know where you're looking at very very minute detail on how they're doing the technique um, through to sometimes it's just about the physiology as well so you can be the sort of motivator blowing a whistle you know trying to get them to work hard and you are that sort of guy on, the, on a rib effectively on the touch line or the side, track side you know spurring them on to give 100%. What would your role encompass during a, a big event? Well uh, if all's going well then you almost at your least um, active I'd say in terms of input I mean that is the outcome regatta uh, you know so when you get to the Olympic Games you tend to almost need to be just a steady uh, a steady sort of hand on the tiller if you like in terms of just making sure that the you know guiding the day a little bit but in terms of actually the the amount of feedback and if you like that sort of plan do review you know those sort of that sort of uh, uh, approach to coaching well, once you get the games those things kind of just really step back a bit you know, it's just tiny little inputs on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if it's big, if it's big in, uh, interventions, you're in trouble. What are your biggest pressures in your role? If you, if you look at it in terms of Olympic Games, it's obviously it's making sure that you've got the, the right approach at the right time. Mm -hmm. And that's high energy, you know, because that's also judging the, 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 the mood of the individual, you know, the aims of the programme, mm -hmm. which is to, you know, the, just to win medals and hopefully gold, you know. Um, and making sure that you've got, you're putting the right, the right little bits of input, guiding it in the right way, and having, I think, ultimately, the right demeanour, you know, mm -hmm. because the effect of someone so close as a coach-sailor relationship, if you're not setting yourself up right and have your approach today, your, your, um, your behaviour right, it has a, perhaps a more of a bigger impact than some of the things you might input on, the, on sort of decision-making on the course or strategy for the day. So those, those things are you know, quite high pressure. You, know, mm -hmm. you have to get that right, that's a judgment. So in terms of qualities uh, as an Olympic level coach, what sort of personal qualities uh, do you have to have? I, I think it's the ability to, to switch into the right mode uh, at the right time. I mm -hmm. think if you can't do that, if you are a one trick pony, then you're only gonna get the hit, the right approach, some of the time mm. and, I, and I think really that's that's something I've learned is you've just got to know when it's time to back off and when it's time just to you know turn the volume up a little bit mm -hmm. and all those things are really critical I'm very lucky I've been working with the same chap with Nick Dempsey since he was 17 and right. you know so we've been together for about 15 years so I think I have a reasonable judge of, uh, of, of his mood and and, and how to play it. I'm sure I'll tell you otherwise. But, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, um, is that sort of quite, when you start working with someone new, that's actually part of the process, is, is getting to know each other? Yes, it is. And I think, I, I th I think it, uh, yeah, I mean, I, one of the things when I started this job is I was also coaching at, at youth level, for example. So I took that group a long way and, and some of the people are now coaching, you know, so you, you, you see them in their sort of formative years, you try and actually shape them in the right way. What's quite difficult, or oh, more difficult, is when you get people that come into your sort of charge um, when you perhaps missed out that link and mm -hmm. I think then you have to, you have to find you know, the right buttons to push and all mm -hmm. those sorts of things. And it's only a challenge when, you know, when you've, I think when you've got to make interventions, you know, if you've got somebody that's self-determined and wants to do it then you haven't got this you know, it's coaching is a joy you know yeah. if they're really into the process and understand they've got to you know the commitment and the and 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 the, the 
putting their own, their own personal sort of uh, effort into to getting out the getting the output, then you, you don't have the challenges. I think as a mm -hmm. coach. Obviously, you mentioned that you'd worked together for for a long time. Does he always listen to you? No. <laughs> Do you always listen to him? No. no. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I, I, I think I think you know there is always a, a, a danger, and over the years we've had to, you know, I've sort of facilitated him working with other other specialists, and maybe on the sort of communication tactic side, you know, where about a different a different voice saying the same song. It's not rocket science saying, mm. you know, it, in whatever form it is, in terms of especially, especially in terms of the wind, what you need to do to achieve the fastest track around the course. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you've just got to deploy other people, the same song, different singer. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there, that is one of the downsides of a long-term uh, relationship. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to believe that he takes everything I, I say and processes it. And, but I think he's very good at looking at me and nodding. Yeah. <laughs> well, like <that> this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe his personality from, from working with him over this, this time? Um, Nick, Nick, Nick's a great. Uh, he's, he's actually built for the Olympics in some respects. I think Nick, I, I you know, genuinely think there's a few pe few people that can that can bring their A game to the Olympics, and Nick's one of those. He's, he's proved that. You know, he's risen above his world ranking to medal in Athens. You know, he he excelled in in China uh, when you know going a year out, he would have probably written him off. Okay, he excelled in as much as he went to the last race and equal points for gold medal but I think to get to that point I think he had to he had to sell better than his form mm. and he does that and mm. I've got every confidence that that's something he brings and experience is only going to help that mm. and uh, you know he's he's pretty laid back at times but he's fiercely competitive and uh, you know and I think he knows when to mm. sort of turn the pitch up to bring his his top his top game mm. and, and that ultimately only counts every four years. You know, he's won a world's this cycle. He's been second in other worlds. You know, he's clearly in the top few. He's won here, medalled here, lots of times. But I think ultimately, you just need to turn that, turn that volume yeah. up. You know, you just just raise your game at the games when others perhaps crumble a little bit. Yeah. And that's Obviously, he, he did just miss out on a medal in in Beijing. I suppose you being there to support him and help him get through that was was quite influential. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I think that's perhaps where we're different. For me, it, you know, it's done. Move on. I think sometimes you underestimate the impact. Uh, I saw the impact of that. The way he went on to then win the worlds the next year, and that was, you know, hats off to him. Fully determined just to, to you know, vindicate the, you know. I, well, just to, 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 I think, just go out and validate himself on the best in the world, and, and mm -hmm. he did that. And for me, that was great. But I think, you know, that was driven by perhaps a real, you know, real disappointment because he was so close. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, if, if some, you know, say Nick or anybody else that you coach has had a particularly bad day out on the water, what, what do you do as a coach to keep them motivated? Any, any tips or tricks? It's, I mean, pretty, pretty simple. The, the, the again, uh, you know, I'm. Mean, Again, it's not rocket science. This is a game of 11 races, and yeah, if it happens at the end of the series and you've blown your chance of meddling, it's not much you can do about it. Anywhere in between that, again, given the nature of the game, I think if you, you might lose the, the battle, but it's about winning the war, and you've just got to get back into the processes that are going to make you succeed in the next race. Simple as that. So it's about keeping your head in the game, effectively. Yeah, and yeah. you know, it's about the next decision. It's not about what happened before, and. And you've just got to believe that you know, as long as you bring your, your best to each race, then you can't do anything about the, the old mistakes. And we are up against, uh, you know, we are up against the elements as well. So things yeah. will come and slap you in the face now and again. <laughs> you know, and you've got to deal with it. Yeah. Is it useful being able to train in these waters where the regatta is going to take place? You can't. You can't beat familiarity. Uh, yeah. I think you know, the more you can experience it, the more chance you have of experiencing the the, the conditions you might get on either. You know, the nine days of racing during the games. Mm -hmm. So, to be a successful windsurfer, or just be able to get up on a board, uh, what sort of physical attributes do you have to have? I, th I think the, the 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 reality is with with, with I, I should imagine the same in any Olympic sport is the 
you know, the, the ability to be too far outside of a given physicality or size, stature, whatever, um, it is reasonably limited. And I, and I think in, in windsurfing it has sort of closed it down to a, to a pretty, uh, not, not completely narrowed down to a very tight range, but a range. So, and, and that's kind of a given, you, know, you have to be a certain, over a certain height for leverage, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but beyond that, I think that the, the, the ability to, the physical attributes, I think the ability to have the, 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 the fitness and, and those elements are kind of key to it. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're one end of that scale, you've just got to be as fit as you can be to fit, fit for purpose, you know, and yeah. same for any of the Olympic classes. But I think definitely it starts to narrow as you get to the pointy end of the fleet. In so is it, you have to have a lot of upper body strength and I know um, I've done it a few times and I get to a point where I go, oh, I can't even be bothered to lift that up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, you, it's one of the all-body sports. I mean, right. if you watch them do it, it's legs, back, core, upper body. You know, it does encompass the. You know, if you if you look at the profile of the sort of, of the uh, 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 of the sport, it is a full-body yeah. workout. Yeah. It is. You know, it's a good it's a good sport to do yeah. on a recreational basis because it is a. Is a total body workout, and I think if you scale that up to to the elite performer, then they have to be overall in great yeah. condition, and it can't just be. Not cyclists have to have strong legs, you know. It, they yeah. have to be all the whole body has to be wow. in good condition. And um, recreational basis, yeah. of course, when you do it, you know, I think you know you just choose the suitable size sail and get someone the right to lift loads. it up for you. Well, <laughs> you could you could do that, I'd, you know. Uh, but, but actually, if you, if you, you know, the, the whole thing is these guys are, are working with, uh, with a very powerful rig. Yeah. Um, it, it's a high-low, top size, you know, big size rig to, to get them going in as light as possible wind. If you're learning, you just learn with a smaller, much lighter rig. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we've got my seven-year-old, when it, my son when he was seven, could windsurf, you know. I know, they put me to shame, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to sell it to you. I know, I yeah. love it. It's great fun. <laughs> Um, what would you say has been your proudest moment as a coach so far? Well, you can't beat, you know, the, the winning the, the silverware, as it were. Mm. And, uh, you know, I have to say that, that both winning the, the medal for Nick, because the way he did it was he had to go out and just smashed the last race in yeah. Athens and, and he did, you know, he went out there and he won it by over, over a minute in that race, that's all he could do. Yeah. And okay, you know, fortunately things conspired and it could have been a silver, could have been bronze, but he got himself a medal and from fourth position, which is fantastic. Um, you know, and that validates his hard work and, mm. and, and what have you. And, but I think also just, I think, you know, when you see him engaged, I think, you know, you know he's fully on it and he goes out and sails and you just see him in his top form. Yeah. Um, and see what an individual can do, you yeah. know, and that's all the stuff they bring to it. You can't yeah. coach that, and you just feel like, you know, you've, you've, you're supporting some, some yeah. real talent, and that gives a great sense of... So do you feel quite emotional when he goes up to get his medals? Or are you already thinking about the, the next one? I think at the end of it, mm. you know, once across the line, fantastic. I think once, you know, for, for me, it kind of very quickly, is, as you say, it's, a, yeah. it's about moving on. I think, I think if we do well here, I think I might, I might um, enjoy the moment a bit longer. Yeah. On his behalf. <laughs> On his behalf, yeah. absolutely. 